This is the, the final big night for the Scratch Art Project. We're about a year in since uh, the thing was conceived, and uh, this is a, the, the big gallery show. And the crowd is just starting to filter in. I'm excited to see what the response is. I think that uh, they did a really nice job laying everything out. It's really pro. Hi, my name is Carson. I tattoo from a private studio in Camarillo, California. When I first learned of the scratch art project, I definitely was interested, but I had still had never done a scratch uh, project of my own, and I kind of procrastinated. I was a little bit scared of the, the whole idea. Scratchboard is not a medium that most artists think about much. Many of us played around with crude scratch boards in grade school and never picked up the medium again. However, the modern Masonite scratch board turns out to be a versatile fine art medium that has a number of interesting parallels with tattooing. Wow, this looks great. This is amazing. My name is Todd Burns and I own Canvas Los Angeles, a uh, tattoo-based clothing store and art gallery. Uh, we just finished the opening of the scratch art exhibit. Just another example of the amazing talents within tattooing that we're proud to showcase. Daily. The blank scratch wall was an experiment to see how much participation we could get from the gallery's guests. Our goal was to see the boards reach a satisfying finish before the show came down three weeks later. To get the ball rolling, I sketched in a few simple shapes with the hope other artists would elaborate on them later in the evening. Other artists, including some of the book's participants, brought their own tools with the plan of making a substantial contribution to this spontaneous project. Scratchboard technique is entirely the artist's choice. It can be raw and expressive, clean and graphic, or anywhere in between. Some artists handled their boards in the same style they tattoo, while others got experimental and did the opposite. Even with over 200 participants in the show, no two artists approached their boards in the same way. You've got 200 plus tattooers from around the world who are given one medium. And seeing the application or the interpretation of that medium in so many different facets, you can't help but notice the true variety. The Scratch Art book features a long list of California artists. As the evening gathered momentum, we began seeing more and more tattooists from the LA area dropping by. Other visiting artists came from Nevada, Arizona, and other states. Legendary Los Angeles tattooist Bob Roberts dropped by to check out the show. Bob has been a huge influence in the tattoo world, so it was an honor to be able to show him the scratch art collection. Alex and Allison Gray were in town that weekend because of some other events and had a chance to experience the show in person. Tattoo artists are some of the greatest draftsmen, you know, that are alive today. So this really demonstrates that. It's just really a, a fun thing to, you know, keep it isolated to a, you know, particular size. You know, it's amazing how much space some people can get into a very small area. There's just like endless beautiful, beautiful work. With such a dramatic spectrum of styles and subjects represented, the scratch art collection is not something to easily take in all at once. The gallery had hung the boards in groups of similar subject matter, which helped serve to highlight the differences between styles. In many ways, tattooists were the ideal group of artists to get involved in this project. They tend to have highly developed technical skills while at the same time maintaining a rugged sense of creative individualism that's hard to find in other artistic fields. Tattoo artists are also not strangers to group art projects and exhibitions, which encourage healthy competition and provide opportunities for exposure. One thing that was kind of interesting is, uh, even though tattooists are, are not shy about charging for their work, many of them didn't want to part with their pieces. Uh, a lot of them got strangely attached to, to their, their scratch boards, and uh, even though they, they do art every day, this is something they just wanted to hang on to. That are tattoo artists spend so much time tattooing for a living, that that's their art that they use as an exchange, and when they finally have time for personal art, it's harder to part with it. The Scratch Art Project didn't just rely on sheer quantity to engage the viewer. Part of what made the show such an artistic success was the fact that so many of the artists went so far beyond what was expected. Nick Baxter was the first artist to submit any scratch boards, setting the bar intimidatingly high. Michelle and I watched in amazement as hundreds of packages arrived over the course of several months, 
carrying scratch pieces that were done with tools ranging from sandpaper to tattoo needles. Some pieces were realistic, others highly stylized, but all of them carried the unique personal imprint of the tattooists who had done them. Seeing all these pieces displayed together made it clear why tattooists operating today are beginning to be seen as fine artists. People are now noticing that the word tattoo artist is disappearing and the use of solely the word artist when it comes to tattooers is taking over. The same night as the Scratch Art Show, renowned tattoo portrait painter Sean Barber held a book release party for his new art book, Forever and Ever. Because the Scratch Show was open later in the evening, Sean was able to come by and see the collection. When he offered to give us a private showing of his work at the Billy Shire Gallery the next day, we decided it was something worth changing our plane tickets for. So, uh, is this the first solo show you've had here in LA? This is my first solo show in Los Angeles, yes. Happy with the turnout and response and everything? Um, happy as I'm going to be, yeah. Well, I mean, you had to crank all this out in four months. Yeah, how do you think that that affects how these pieces turn out? Started the first piece of Danny at work and spent a good month and a half on it, and then soon realized that uh, I was in trouble. <laughs> I think part of the problem was the show's about Los Angeles tattoo. So it's like, I want to get as many of the people that really make up this core of the scene in, in LA and, and represent them the way that they should be represented. You know, and to do that in a short amount of time is pretty crazy. I, I think for every show it's a marker of, okay, what, what did I do that I didn't do before and what can I do next that I'm afraid to do? We have a show scheduled for 2011 and it'll be the same theme. It'll, it'll be wherever I am in my head at that time, but in Los Angeles. You know, I think I did the best with what I could do and, and you know, I'm just reflecting what I see. You know, it's not, it's not about me, even though I'm the one who did it. Right, you're, you're the filter. Exactly. Well, nice job filtering. Thank you. Overall, we had a very artistically inspiring weekend. The Scratch Art Show is something unprecedented, and to be part of it was a rare opportunity. The book we published from it is a faithful catalog of the entire show, displaying most of the pieces at actual size, and we hope to see it eventually develop into a second volume. We are going to do volume two. It's going to be a little different. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a chance to upgrade the format. We're going to try to raise the bar a little bit. I was really impressed and really surprised with the book itself and the artists and the submissions, you know, amazing artwork. Like some of the stuff I saw I didn't think was possible until I saw it. I just want to say that it was, a, it was an awesome and fun project and I was happy to be a part of it.